Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here and welcome to another Final Fantasy XIV video. Now in Final Fantasy XIV, the user interface is often something that people have to fiddle with in order to really get to fit their own needs and desires. So, a lot of people come to me and ask me if there's any options or ideas that I have that could really help them out. Now everyone has a different taste, but I figured I could do a few different setups. Uh, in this video, I'm actually going to be attempting a minimalist means of setting up your user interface, so that way you have plenty of room on the screen to notice things like mechanics, and also get certain things that you may feel are necessary on the screen, but really, you don't need them there. So. Just really quick, this is going to be completely covered within the realm of Final Fantasy XIV's user interface. We are not going to be using any advanced combat tracker overlays or any sort of plugins on this. Now on top of that, I know that we have the box blocking the chat in the bottom left. However, I can guarantee you that that box is almost the exact dimensions of my chat, so keep that in mind when we're going forward, that you can of course adjust that to any size that you really need to. Now as you can see, this is my usual hotbar setup. I am not by any means a minimalist player excuse me, a minimalist player. I prefer to have a lot of things centered around the screen so that way I can, you know, have my hotbars within my line of sight whenever I'm doing mechanics. However, I do know a lot of people that will get most of this off the screen and only keep the most vital information. Things that they have muscle memory, they simply remove, or unnecessary information. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So the first thing to do when approaching a minimalist hotbar or user interface setup is to first go to your HUD layout and identify any features you simply just don't need on your screen. You're also going to want to move as many things away from the center of your screen as possible, and so that way you have plenty of room to look around for mechanics. Now, I'm going to be doing some things. Now, for example, server info at the top. <clears throat> this is not really something that's super necessary for me. Minimap, however, uh, I am going to actually shrink this down. It doesn't need to be that large for me to see it. Now, the server info, obviously, if you're a gatherer or a crafter, it's a bit of a different story. However, I am going to keep it here just for the sake of that. We're going to make it this size. That way we can properly see everything. Now, we're also going to determine are there any other things. Now, the notices section, again, for me, does not need to be that large. It sticks out anyway. And besides, when you're getting notices, you can generally see them pretty easily. Now, one thing when you're snap, you can actually hold shift to snap things into place. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't really line up in a way that I enjoy. So some most of the time, you'll just see me doing it manually. We also have different hot bars. Now, if you're not using them, they're hidden on the screen. We'll be going over that in a little bit. The duty list, action, help, inventory grid, main menu. I feel like the inventory grid, while it is a nice piece of information, I don't necessarily need it. And we'll be going over ways to actually hide a lot of this information. Gill, again, not too important. The main menu itself, I would actually like to have up here. Uh, so that way we have everything that's not my hot bars or anything else consolidated all in one spot. I'm also going to be a little bit specific about this. And I am going to do them from longest in terms of the three options I have up here, server, info, main menu, and notices, and I'm going to do them from largest or longest to shortest. Now on top of that, like I said, the inventory grid will be turning off, the parameter bar will probably be shrinking, although I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it. At level 60, the experience bar is, again, something that's not very useful. The enemy list will be consolidating along with the target bar, the focus target bar, and the party list. We also have the limit break gauge and the item help. Uh, we'll be putting all this stuff in a pretty similar spot, but for now, we're going to leave it where it is. So we've already reduced the amount of space on the screen that's being used in the top right, and I can still access all of that information pretty soundly. So the next thing we're going to do is turn off the features that we decided we really don't need. Now in order to do that, you're going to want to go into your UI settings, and you're going to want to look at different things that you can turn off. For example, if you get that play guide every time you log in, turn that off, please. Uh, if you don't need item help, action help, or pop-up text, you can always turn it off right here. When it comes to the HUD itself, there's a lot of things you can do. For example, we can turn off the display for the experience points bar. We can turn off the parameter bar. I'm not going to do that. Uh, display the inventory grid. We're going to turn that off. Now, the duty list is one that some people need, some people don't. I tend to go to my journal when I'm looking for that anyway, so that frees up a huge amount of space, especially if you're someone who likes to keep a lot of quests. Generally, unless you're on a quest that you like to keep track of actively and you don't want to press the extra button to go into the journal, you can leave it there, but I uh, just kind of prefer to get rid of it entirely. If it really bothers you, you can just have it display one or two no uh, duties. You can actually set that anywhere from one to five, as you can see right here. And then you can just track the ones that you need the most. Uh, I'm going to turn it off entirely for this video. Display gill, not something I necessarily need. Most of, the, uh, most of the menus that actually require gill as part of the transaction will tell you how much you have anyway. So again, don't really need that. Server info we're going to leave on. If you're a crafter or a gatherer, or I'm sorry, if you're a gatherer, you definitely want to do that. If you're not a gatherer, you can probably consider turning that off, unless you like to use it to tell when you get mail. Limit gauge we're going to keep on as well. Uh, target information, enemy list, focus target, and targets remaining HP percentage, we're going to leave all of these on. 
Another big one you have to decide is, especially when you're solo, do you want to have the party list on the screen? Now, if you didn't know this, you can actually permanently display the party list even when you're not in a party. You have the option here to hide it if you really want to when playing solo, but you could also just you could turn you could choose to turn it off entirely. There are some people who just turn it off because they don't feel the need to actually pay attention to other people's mechanics. I prefer to keep it on and I prefer to have it on when solo. So we're going to be taking care of that. You can also decide when displaying alliance lists. This is something that isn't very necessary, I feel, when it comes to a minimalist approach because in 24 mans, very rarely as a DPS at the very least or a tank, do you need to worry about what's going on in the other parties outside of just kind of assessing the situation. As a healer, it's more common to leave these on just because sometimes you want to throw a heal to the tank that's in the other party or you want to throw a res on to help one of the other alliances as well. So we're going to leave all those on. Uh, we also have our display names. I have mine. Uh, it's color changed as I'm colorblind. You can change any of the colors here. Companions, pets, yourself, party members, alliance members, NPCs, anything you want here. You can change the color so it's easier for you to see. All right, so we've already gotten rid of quite a few things. And our hotbars, or our, I should say our screen, is starting to look a little bit more free. The hotbar settings is really where I feel things get the most customizable, or at least it's where I tend to feel like I use the most space on the screen. Now, like I said, I have everything consolidated onto the center of the screen. I don't think that that's, you know, anything wrong with that. But that being said, I do have some buttons here that I don't really feel like I need to know where they are all the time. Good example is a lot of this stuff, one, two, three, and four. <clears throat> the way that it's set up here is pretty suboptimal, in my opinion. But some people like to have all the buttons on their screen. So we are going to start by simply moving our hotbars down to this section right here. Now, obviously this number two is gonna get in the way eventually. When we're done, we're actually going to disable all the hotbar numbers, and that way they don't get in the way of things like locking and unlocking the uh, the hotbars editing. So we can put those there. Now, obviously it looks like a bit of a mess because you know I have target attack here, target two and three, uh, two and four here. So don't take this as an example of how to set up your hotbars as a ninja. I'm going to undo this all once the video is done anyway. Just take it as an example of what you can do with your hotbars to free up more space in the middle of the screen. So the next one here, this is one very common means of doing it. A lot of people will call this the WoW setup. Before you do any add-ons or anything like that in World of Warcraft, this is generally how the hotbars are set up. Uh, with the 1 to 10 across the bottom, and then also sometimes people turn on the hotbars that are like this. Another thing you can do with these three hotbars, the way I have them set up, is you can just put them all at the bottom of the screen the same here. You just don't have to actually uh, line them up at the bottom. They're just all the way at the bottom and they're taking up less space. Now I gotta be a little bit careful here because of the way I did this, so I actually want to move this very quickly. And we'll set it up like that. So now I still have the same hotbar setup, I can still see all of it, and it's still a good amount of information. Now, uh, when it comes to cooldowns, uh, again, same deal. You can choose to consolidate them all down here with everything else, or you can choose to do something else with it. There's, there's lots of options here. I'm just giving you guys ideas. Uh, we can also just put things like this here, although I can notice that this hotbar is a little bit smaller. And then you can do things like put your minions and mounts all the way over here if you really want to. And keep in mind that if you want to move these hotbars without the display hotbar setup on, you can, of course, do that in the HUD menu right here. The HUD layout, uh, this the option, you can line them up a little bit better here as well. The inventory grid and guild don't really matter, so I'm not even going to bother moving them. But now, we have something that's looking a lot nicer. Uh, we have all of our skills in the bottom left. We have plenty of room in the middle of the screen. We have our mounts and our minions, some of our cooldowns over on the right-hand side. So... That's actually one thing that I want to talk about, is the use of cooldowns when it comes to doing a minimalist uh, approach. One of the very common approaches, and I think I'm actually blocking, yeah, I'm blocking this a little bit. I'm going to move them over just for the sake, actually, I can probably just shrink this a tiny bit more. There, that's better. Okay, so uh, you can see that uh, one thing that I see a lot of jobs do, uh, especially Paladin back in 2.0, I've seen a lot of Paladins do this, is you just get rid of hotbars that ha are full of actions that you have you have memorized, uh, you know, have mes muscle memory. So very often, like as you can see, I have Dancing Edge, uh, you know, Mutilate, what's it called, uh, you know, all, all of my base combo skills. All of these I don't really need to know. Keen Flare I don't even have. I don't usually have Goad here. And then these other skills like Sprint, like there's the occasional use. But one idea is to basically hide all of these things from your hotbar. So you don't really need to keep track of them. You still leave them... Um, you still leave them available, and those are still the buttons that you'll press, but you simply hide the hotbar as opposed to leaving it out in the open. Now, uh, let's see how we can go about doing this. Now, 
As you can see, I can turn off the display. Now, I've actually not done this, so let me just make sure here that even though it's not displaying, you can see that I'm still able to use my skills. So that way, it's kind of just freeing up the amount of information you have on the screen. Another thing I could easily do that with is this hotbar. I know 1, 2, and 3 are my ninjutsus. I can always put the actual skill, my uh, ninjutsu, in the middle of the screen. And then, of course, I know that my Invigorate is Shift 4, I know that my Go to Shift 5, my Shade Shift is that. I know Duality is Shift Mouse Button 1, I know Shade Walkers 2, and Smoke Trains 3. I don't need these buttons on the screen for any real reason. I've memorized the fact that those buttons are there. So realistically, I should, in theory, be able to perform most of my job without any of these hotbars turned on. Obviously, this would take a bit of practice, as once you've had them up on the screen, as frequently as I have, I'll probably mess this up in all reality. But then I end up with a situation where I have no hotbars on the bottom of my screen and I have a much nicer looking setup right here. Then I can just do things like keep track of my more important cooldowns. Uh, obviously I'm having a bit of trouble figuring out where I want to put these ones. I'll just stick those over there for the time being. And then we still have a few other aspects that we could uh, consolidate here. I'm actually going to teleport over to a place where I can test out so you can see what it looks like trying to do a rotation in such a way. Uh, we're going to teleport over to the free company house for Elysium. And we're just going to, you know, basically do a few hits so you can see what it looks like on your screen when you kind of get an idea of what you're trying to do here. Uh, he's busy over there, so I'm going to go to the secret striking dummy we have back here. So, you know, I can see that my ninjutsu is changing, so I know if I've made an error and I know that my button presses are going. I can see the cooldown just as clearly with just the ninjutsu button. I know 3, 2, 1 is my hutan, 1, 2, 3 is my sweetan. And obviously for other jobs, this is a bit of a different example, but you would be adjusting the hotbar as such here. So like, I know generally what my opener is, and then I have some buttons over on the right hand side, although I just realized that uh, one of them was not what I thought it was, so. I mean, like, I know this pretty fairly, although that didn't go as planned. Still, mostly accurate. Didn't really practice this before I decided to do the video, but you get a rough idea of what I mean. Even without all the hotbars there, I played the job enough to know that. Now, obviously, there are things missing. I don't know where, uh, I don't know what my cooldowns are for some of my skills right now because I have them hidden. Obviously, you would set this up in such a way where those are available, but this is a very nice way of taking that minimalist approach, as I've been saying. So let's go back to the hotbar setup. Let's re-display those hotbars so that way I can mess around with them a little bit more. Now I can see them much better. And we can move this back over here so we can do the setup. Now we still have a few elements in the UI that are kind of out of place. For example, the parameter bar is a big one. And what we're basically going to want to do is we're going to try to consolidate the target bar and the uh, target bar and all the parameter bars. So that way we have all that information kind of down here. Now the size you want it to take up, up to you. Uh, but again, we don't have certain aspects. Like obviously my experience bar is not very important when it comes to this. So, uh, we have the parameter bar, which we can stick right there. That's a lot better. Uh, cross hotbar. Again, you could apply a lot of these settings to the cross hotbar as well. You could put your cross hotbar on the bottom right. I can't do that because I'm not, you know, experienced enough with it. But then we have the target bar. Can enlarge it even more. Could shrink it a little bit. So we can stick that right there. Probably be best if I actually had an active target near me. Pet hotbar as well. Uh, whatever you want to do with it. I actually usually keep it right here, and then I move this hotbar a little bit higher. Makes it look kind of strange when I'm not playing Summoner or Scholar or uh, Machinist, but it looks good to me. Then we have what else? We have the progress bar for things like casting, uh, spell casts. I'm going to put that right there, again trying to kind of keep the uh, sides going effectively. And then the status bar. Now I actually like to keep my status bar near either my focus target bar or my target bar itself. So I'm actually going to make sure that it fits at least somewhat comfortably. It'd be nice for me personally, uh, part, one of the things on my uh, wish list when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV UI elements is definitely separating the good buffs from the, uh, from the bad debuffs and having them on two separate status effect bars so I can maybe stack them on top of each other. That's on my wish list for Final Fantasy XIV's user interface. So I'm actually going to bring this a little bit closer to here. And we can see kind of where my buffs begin and end, so even though it's like way over, see what I mean? Like it's like so much over, but it still like fits kind of cleanly. So then we put the target bar over that, we put the progress bar over that, and then we can put the focus target bar right here, kind of fits kind of snugly in between the two. 
Uh, we have our alliance lists, which we are going to consolidate over here. Again, if I feel like those are only really necessary if I'm a healer. And then the party list, which I could fit right about here. And because I'm hiding certain other elements, it actually would work okay. So now, we have everything as far away from the middle of the screen as possible. We still have all the same information we had before, still leaving those hotbar numbers on for easy editing. But now you can get a better idea of what's going on here. Now, I'm actually not a big fan of the size that I picked for the HUD layout right here, so I'm actually going to enlarge this, and let's see how it looks on the screen. All right, it's a little bit off, so now we would have to modify it. It'd be best to have a target and then do this HUD layout. That way I can actually see the size of what we're looking at. There we go. So now we can get a better idea of uh, what's going on and how we really want to modify it. Okay, that looks a lot better, uh, at least to me it does. So that way I can have, you know, maybe a focus target over on this dummy that we have on the side of the house for no reason at all. And then we have this striking dummy as our actual target. So you can kind of see what it looks like here. Also, uh, just enough space under where the focus target is, but you'll notice that that's where my name is. So uh, I can either turn that feature off so I don't see the target of it, or I'll probably have to move my focus target up a little bit more. It's things like this that you really gotta uh, mess around with so you can actually see and make sure that it all fits properly. So now I got focus target, now my name is there. So let's go on my focus target so we can get a rough idea of how it's working and if there's enough space down there. All right, it's a little bit too big, so we're actually going to shrink the focus bar a tiny bit and then move it over. Eh, still a little bit. I think I just made it the same size again. What was the base size? I had it at 120%, uh, now it's at 100%. So let's move things up a slight, oh, that's the wrong one. Let's move things up slightly more. I got plenty of space because the Alliance, it doesn't really dig into the Alliance bar because of the way it is, and then, now we have enough space. Now we can see the target, we can see all the debuffs on the striking dummy for the focus target. Sorry, I just uh, bumped into my microphone a little bit. And I have my party information over on the far right hand side. So, this is one approach for a minimalist. There are other things I can move around, such as the enemy list, which you can uh, do anyway. The enemy list can get pretty long at times, so I would probably stick that right here right next to that and it looks kind of silly when it's on its own so if I wasn't doing Alliance content I might move it over pretty much directly next to my party bar like this per se all right now it looks a little bit nicer it doesn't look quite as uniform just because the way that they kind of fills the space all right that looks a little bit better all right that looks a little bit more uniform so now I can see the targets. The thing is, if there's way too many targets, it's going to dig into the striking dummy. And these are all things, but I think you get the rough idea of what we're going for here. We're trying to keep things like mountain minions off to the side over here, uh, which for some reason I can't... Oh, it's because I'm in combat that I can't execute them. Uh, and then, of course, we would go back and we would remove certain things such as, you know, display hotbar numbers, apply... And then I have all that information over there. There are other things you can do to consolidate information, macros you can make for displaying hotbars. I should probably make a separate video on that one so you can combine it with this, and you should be good to go. So, uh, yep, then I have my mounts, I have my minions, all that's way off to the side, and I have all this space in the middle of the screen to really take in and understand my mechanics. This works a lot better once you've memorized your buttons, once you've developed muscle memories for uh, muscle memory for different jobs, because obviously every different job kind of want a different setup. So figure out what works best for you. Hopefully this helped out and you understand a way to approach minimalist uh, user interfaces. There are plenty of other things here you can do to modify it as well. Things that come to the hot bar, the cross hot bar, ways to save space, uh, plenty of things that you can disable and uh, and enable. If you don't need this, like the description of the skill, obviously you could get rid of that. It looks kind of, excuse me, uh, it looks kind of strange on my uh, on my thing. So we're gonna do it fixed. You can do it in a fixed location that's like way out of the way also, or you can just turn it off altogether. Uh, Pop-up help and action help. There. Now I know what these skills do, and if I forget, I'll just go into my job menu. So, uh, hopefully this helped you guys out. You can understand a little bit more about the user interface and ways that you can make it work for you. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section of the video below. Would you like to see more different types of user interfaces or means of, through which that you can modify the user interface? Let me know, and I'll be sure to do more videos on that. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and I will see you guys in the next video. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time, and until then... Take care.